minutes, minute, 60 seconds. That's what it takes for your life to change. A tornado or a hurricane can swipe your house that fast. But that, to me, was when I met Kate and Michael. That day is the day I cherish the most. He gave me a brother. He gave me a best friend. Without Kate and Michael, I wouldn't be here today. The memories and the things we did, some people wouldn't believe. But we made it through. And to that, I give it to you, Kate and Michael. Thank you. Selfless, compassionate, and courageous are a few traits, to say the least, that Katie possesses. Throughout my time in the Blue Jacket, I have never ever met someone who embraces every hardship and who has fought tooth and nail for what he believes in. The way he gravitates and connects to members and learns their stories, puts others' needs above his own, and embraces all opportunities and their outcomes, I can truly say that he has grown into an outstanding young, outstanding young man and leader. From meeting him as a fearful freshman who I, serve, who I strive to turn into an outgoing and secure individual, little did I know that the whole time I was trying to impact him, Caden was the one who impacted me to be who I am today. Caden, you can achieve great things as long as you believe in yourself. And this year is your testament to defying those odds. I'm so beyond proud of you. Got me down the paths that I was able to grow into and push me to be a better person than I ever thought I could imagine. Not only did he show me what, a, what true leadership was, he showed me what a best friend was supposed to be. Besides that, Kate pushed me to do things I never thought I would have done outside of school and FFA. Throughout this time, he became a brother to me, and I will, I will never forget the things he did for me. Not only did he make an impact in my life, but he has made impacts and great influences in many other students and teachers' lives. Between the countless schools he has visited, the thoughtful connections that he has made, and his outreach across our state, he has become a vital part and leader to this organization. And with that being said, I now introduce my best friend and your 2022-2023 State Vice President, representing Area 3, Kate Smith. Absolutely miserable. 
I remember this one time, I was in a routine blocking drill when I proceeded to get drilled. As I laid upon my back, there was a 6 foot 6, 245 pound, fully grown beard man child sitting over me flexing. And I kind of thought to myself, you know, maybe this isn't meant for me. But I kept pushing through it and made it past. And then the spring was rolling around, and I was sitting there, not doing the still. Me and my teammates and my coaches had plenty of disagreements. You know what? I thought about quitting. But I knew I'd make my dad disappointed if I quit. But I had enough. I had nothing to do. So I went and talked to him, and things that he said have hung with me ever since that day. He told me, you have to make yourself happy. Now hearing this as a freshman in high school who was facing a quit the sport he always thought that he was destined for, it's like walking to a Catholic church and scream out rockets and blaring over the audience just like, RAW! It's so unnerving. It was scary. But I took that as the go-ahead and talked to my head coach. You wanna know what he told me? The first thing he said when I walked in there was you go in soft spinning. It's too hard. Once you'll quit, you'll always be quit. Now, he can be where it hurt, because my family always had that motto, once you quit, you'll always be a quitter. And so it helped me for a very long time, since very day. But I walked out of that locker room, and thought I'd make my family proud, and all the way I know how. I'm going to become one of the best wrestlers in the state of Louisiana. <laughs> now, I want to give you guys another visual for a second. I was still this very tiny guy, and I lost to absolutely everybody my first year of wrestling. Big, small, girl, boy, doesn't matter. I lost. It was miserable. But I kept winning. I was going into the mat, getting stronger, faster than that. I was becoming a better leader. I was becoming a better communicator. But there was one thing that was bothering me in the back of my mind. I was feeling burnt out. But I didn't comprehend it at the time. But it was keeping me alive. And then came home my sophomore year. Where I was up against the fourth state ranked wrestler in my weight class. And that guy was built like a pit bull. He was massive. And I was petrified. The first round I was almost pinned at least three to four times. And you know what? I thought I was. But then somehow, or actually in the second round, this guy decided to use his strength instead of his brain. And I somehow got him on his back. And the one thing. I thought I was trying for my entire time wrestling. I finally accomplished. And I finally felt like I made my family proud. But there was still one thing lingering. I was burned. But how could you feel burned out? I had just accomplished one of the best things I could have possibly done in wrestling for a sophomore. And then comes rolling in junior year. Now, my coach bought a brand new drill into practice. Call the toe tap. Basically, the rest of them get to go for the feet. And every time they slapped their shoelaces, it was 10 burgers. So okay. But I was going against my assistant coach. He knew the drill in and out. So he pushed me over, slapped my foot 23 times, and I sat there arguing with them for cool. about an hour? Just back and forth arguing with them. And the thing was, he's, I was arguing, but he said, you're going to do it. I don't care what you're going to say. So I said, okay, I'm going to do it. But I kept running my mouth. And you know what? I was going to let him know how I felt. And then he kicks me out the rest of the I was like, what? Like, why? But I didn't think much of it. I just went home, slept, played video games, ate, prepared for the next day of work. But I had a realization before the next day of practice. If I get kicked out of this wrestling room again, <laughs> I'm off the wrestling team. But that's easy to forget whenever you're doing the same drill the next day, and he slaps your foot 15 times. So, 150 burpees, me in my mouth later, I was kicked out of a wrestling room and off of the wrestling team. The one thing I had thought was finally becoming better, the one thing I truly had pride in, the one thing I thought was making my family proud when I was kicked off because you know what, I decided to open my mouth. And it hurt. But, I walked out of that wrestling room into a cow pasture where I saw my pet cow and I soon realized this where my happiness was Also, sorry to burst your bubble, guys, but she's actually dead. So. <laughs> okay, fair, fair, fair. Oh, let's bring it back, bring it back. All right. <laughs> Have any of you ever heard of the imposter syndrome? The imposter syndrome is basically whenever you're feeling 
a lot of external results. I was becoming faster, stronger than men. I was becoming a better leader, a better communicator. But inside I was burnt out, it was hurting me. I was anxious, I was afraid to trust others, I was afraid to be myself. And it ate me every single day of high school. And so in high school, I was always known as that kid. Or, Coach Kevin's son, so that's that. I was really annoyed my freshman through junior year. I was the type of kid who would be looking over people's shoulders and be like, Ooh, you texting? I was annoying. Very, very annoying. And I kept doing that every single day because I was just trying to make friends. And you know what? I didn't realize I was pushing them away. I slowly became isolated from people around And it really hurt because I didn't know what to do. And I lost who I was in person. But my three advisors, what about you the thing? They took me in. They gave me my high school experience. I would not be the person who I am today without them. And I hope you can have an advisor who's just like these two right here. Because you know what? They helped me through, through some of the hardest times in my life. They became a whole family to me. And I respect them so much for it. The people who just introduced me are also my second family. Because you know what? We all built upon one foundation. Now we think of family. Whatever we felt like sometimes, we needed more. Now, let's take a switch for a second. Let's cut the lights. There we go. Alright, I'm just going to show you an image of a certain singer and songwriter named Billy. Billy Joel was a singer and songwriter between the 70s and 80s. And I like to refer to him as the American Elton John. Now, you may be thinking, Kate Mark is showing us an image of a hobo sitting on a bed, looking at him with a mask and a pillow. Well, I think I'm going to tell you guys something. We are all Billy Joel looking at a version of ourselves that we don't like. Think about it for a second. How does this mask represent you? For me, it represents my constant distrust of others, my fear of making a mistake, my fear of being made fun of, and most of all, my fear of failing every single one of you in this room. Because y'all have became a second deal with me, and I love y'all. It also became stronger and stronger every time I felt like I had failed. The rest of the football, it constantly stuck with me, and I slowly became a husk to who I was truly supposed to be. And it hurt. And if y'all are anything like me, some of you may be feeling the exact way and feel like there's no escape. I can tell you there is. We need to take off our mask and be the people we truly are supposed to be. Yeah. I think I'd love to be straight for a second. Where are my Zawali and Flory people at today? <laughs> These two chapter events are by far two of my favorite in the entire year. Not because we had so much fun doing the workshops and all that, but because we were able to sit down and talk and say the things that were truly there was one thing that was recurrent to all of them. We were afraid to trust others. And you must not let them get us. I understand what you guys are going through. I let them all throughout high school. It is horrible. But the thing is, we have to be the truest and realest version of ourselves. Because if we sh keep sharing that idea, more and more will catch on. And we will truly be the person that we're supposed to be. It will slowly come off. If you're feeling burnt out, don't be afraid to come yourself. Because you guys need it. I know I need it. Things like God. Life is hard, people. Everybody has their own different viewpoints, their own different points of view. All of us will think we're right or wrong in our own way. And you know, we're not wrong, we're not right. But the thing is, we have to take off that mask and be the truest and realest version of ourselves that we can be. Because if we don't, we'll sit here lost and alone like God was all the time. And I still walk out living with shadow. I was so afraid of failing my family. That I didn't realize I was only really a husband could have, who I could have been. And it ate me day in and day out. And so, we shouldn't have to live in fear to love the people and trust the people who love the most. Thank you.
brings joy, comfort, and laughter to this team. You have been our shoulder to cry on, our listening ear, and someone we can rely on for almost anything. And even though it's still astounding how you managed to get $500 worth of speeding tickets in one trip, <laughs> we still love you. To Reaching for the Impossible, love Sydney, Allie, Elena, Lauren, Annie, Rachel, Colton, Abigail, and Grace. Louisiana FFA for the final time.